Let's do some paper 2 section B questions. For this first question we're going to talk about monosaccharides and this first question is actually quite easy. We're going to be, I mean, you, you need to know the three basic types of monosaccharides and they've given us glucose and galactose and the final one that you should definitely need to know is most certainly fructose. However if you're tricky as well you can talk about ribose as well. Ribose being one of the sugars that is kind of involved with the deoxyribonucleic acid or DNA. Now the second question we you is uh, state which type of carbohydrate lactose is and lactose is a combination of two smaller sugars so it's a disaccharide and these are composed of both galactose and glucose and you need to know the other two types of disaccharide being maltose as well as sucrose as well moving on to the third question state the type of chemical reaction that occurs when lactose is digested into glucose and galactose and there are two types of reaction here there's hydrolysis and condensation hydrolysis hydro means water lysis means breakdown so you're using water to break down a complex molecule the opposite of that is condensation so in this case it's a hydrolysis reaction next one explain three reasons for converting lactose to glucose and galactose during food processing so they're talking about the breakdown of lactose into simpler molecules the first one is that um, lactose intolerant people tend to um, uh, cannot consume milk which contains lactose the second reason is that uh, lactose is not a particular, particularly sweet carbohydrate, but if you break it down to glucose and galactose, it becomes a much sweeter. Thirdly and finally, people say that uh, if you break lactose down, it has a somewhat creamier texture than if it was before. Our final question, which is a two-mark question, is... Uh, Ultimately, suggest reasons for using lactase at a relatively low temperature because it has a highest initial rate of reaction at 48 degrees Celsius. But in actual fact, uh, the food processing companies don't use a 48 degrees centigrade temperature. They use something lower, perhaps say 25 or 30. Now, this one's a, a bit of a trickier question, but I've put down a couple of answers that I believe will be correct. Firstly, the fact that the enzymes might may denature at higher temperatures. So if you keep it at a somewhat lower temperature, the rate of reaction will be slower, but you'll be able to keep the enzyme there for much longer. The second one that I've put down right here is that higher temperatures may ruin the flavour of the food. And this isn't to do with the enzyme as such, but with the different flavours in, in there. Thank you.